Hello, Donna here. Welcome to my studio. Welcome to my channel and welcome to this little class. Now, these beads I made a very, very long time ago, long time ago. I really liked them, but I never did anything with them. So I thought that I would go ahead and show you how to make them cute little stripy beads. Nothing very difficult. Now you're going to need translucent. You're going to need gold or some metallic. You're going to need black and white. And that is pretty much it. Now to begin with, I'm going to mix equal parts of gold and translucent. Okay, so let me get the package off. Translucent feels great. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. The hardest part is always getting the dang cellophane off the package, off the clay. Getting the cellophane packaging off the clay. That's what I was trying to say. Didn't say it very well, did I? Okay, excellent. I'm still working on it. It isn't supposed to be that hard, but somehow I made it that hard. Difficult. Difficile. All right, so let us just start with two ribs of each color. I don't see any reason to make a huge amount of this. Not at this moment. Set that aside. We're going to need this translucent again. All right, so let's condition this puppy. I'm hoping this class is not too long. <laughs> but knowing me, it could be. It could grow, 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 grow. Here are some samples of sheets. All right. Oops. My dog just walked in. Louie, say hello. Lulu. He's so cute. He's an Australian shepherd. Australian. All right, so I am just going to mix these and then I will be back. Okay, so I mixed these. All right, just like that. Doesn't look very different. But now I need translucent clay as well. So let's just take three ribs of translucent. I'm going to condition this up. Then I'm going to condition... Mm, the equivalent of two ribs of white. Okay, I'll be back when everything's conditioned. All right, I have my sheets. Gold, translucent, white, and black. Now the gold, I'm just simply going to roll up. <sighs> like this, yeah. Let me cut the excess away, what do you think? You know, I'm moving, <laughs> I'm moving this back. Why am I reaching? I'm reaching and it's not working out that well. So I might as well. I'm gonna make it, e I'm gonna make even less of it. Okay, so this appears to be I have a ruler somewhere. Oh, here. Look, a rings and things ruler. Oh, yes. Okay. Five eighths. Five eighths. Now, what I want to do is wrap it with translucent clay. And this translucent clay, I believe, is through like one, maybe. Let me roll it through one. Just so I know for sure. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right. So on my Atlas machine, it starts at zero. Yeah, it does. Starts at zero. 
So I need, there is one thicker setting. Hmm. Okay, gonna wrap it up because all I'm doing is making a bullseye. Da, 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 da. I'm gonna bring these together like that. Ooh, look at that. Put that there, put that there. Okay. So far it doesn't look like anything, right? Yeah. I know. And this is just a very simple. Simple, simple cane, but there are a couple of places where you can go wrong. And I will tell you what one of them is. Now, when, let's just look at the bead for a moment. Because what you see here is the gold. And see the separation between the gold and the white? That is this translucent. Now the white is there and that white is protecting the, um, the translucent because if I didn't have white around there, the translucent would just simply adopt any other color that was there. So I choose to make the color white. You know, it's just my choice, okay? Now this cane is going to have a black wrap around it as illustrated by this bead. So here you see the gold, then you see the separation between the white and the gold, and that is the translucent. Then you see the thin white, and you see very thin black, okay? And then all of that has been placed on or in orange. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I'm going to put the white on. And this white has been rolled through setting six. No, what I make, chances are it's not going to look exactly like any of these other things because I don't know what the exact settings I used to make this were. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of an old cane, so it's been around a while and I don't know. I made no notes about this cane. Oh, I might as well make a nice straight edge. Then make another nice straight edge. Get rid of the hat. Cut. And then wrap. Just like that. There we are. Now what I'm going to do here is reduce it and reduce it by a lot. I hear some movement. Vernon? Yes. That must mean Louie is barking, huh? Yeah. You want me to get him? I'm halfway down. That's okay. We'll let him bark for a moment because I'm recording. Okay. I'm recording. Then I will retrieve my dog who is outside in his yard. Louie has his own, very own yard. Yeah. Okay. So you get the picture. I'm just going to continue reducing and pulling and stretching and making it very, very fine. I'm gonna go get my dog. Okay, so the dog's in and I reduce this out. Pretty fine, pretty thin. Okay, now scrap clay. And this has been rolled through maybe setting three. This is black clay. It's been rolled through setting four. I'm just gonna put it right on top there like so okay because i don't really see any reason to use all my black clay when i'm just creating a sheet that's going to be wrapped around more scrap clay yeah that's exactly it 
Okay. All right. Now, this also doesn't have to be that thick. I'm going to roll this through setting two. That looks pretty good. I will, you know, it's a little bit thick, but I think, no, I'm going to leave it just like that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is take a ball stylus. And with my ball stylus, I'm going to create a series of wavy lines. Digging like so, you see? I don't think too terribly much about this. You know, the lines can touch. Definitely. This is one of those things where it's doesn't require a heck of a lot of thought. Okay. Require some thought. But I sure as heck wouldn't lose sleep about it. There we go. Okay, so that's just a sample. Now I'm just going to try to get rid of some of these little bits. Just like so. Okay, excellent. Now I've stuck this to my work surface and you know what, that's fine. That's good because it's going to make it easier for me when I get to the next part, which is to take Skinny Snake, just kind of push it into the channel, like so. Let's take it along like that, and I really am kind of pushing it down in. Now I'm gonna take my blade, and I'm gonna use a very sharp blade, one of these blue blades, this, this guy. And what I do is I arc the blade slightly and then cut through. Arcing, and I'm trying to slide the blade along the surface of the flat sheet. Just like that, you see? Now, this one I'm going to take, and I'm just going to sort of randomly place it somewhere else in the sheet. So it's not going to go right next to it. I think it probably works out better if you don't have two sides that came from the same place and are identical. Maybe it doesn't make any difference because now I have to shave it away anyway because I want to make a flat sheet. Like so. Just like that. Now, as I'm looking at it, I probably could have made the translucent even thicker. Okay. You see the difference? Well, I don't want to pick it up, but the separation, the space between the gold and the white is seems to me to be a bit smaller. I could be wrong though. I could be wrong because once this is cured, the translucent becomes more translucent, right? And so I might be totally wrong about this. Wouldn't be the first time. All right, so let's take the next, put it in like so. This one is thinner. You saw me just roll it a bit thinner. So it's sitting deeper in, into the channel. Once again, shave the top. Like so. Take this piece 
find another place for it. Like that. Shave any excess off the top. And continue. So that is what I will do. I will keep making lines and filling it out. Then I'll be back. Okay, so I did it. Now you see these areas where there's a lot of white. Well, <laughs> I cut away a lot. I cut away the gold. Does it bother me? Only a bit. Only a bit. But what I'm going to do now is try to flatten the surface. And the way you do that is just by taking something like this or an acrylic rod and just rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Feels good. Okay, let's pick it up like so. All right, scrap clay, scrappage. Let me make it as long. How about that? First trim, 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 trim. And, uh, you know, I did sand the beads quite a bit, so I'll probably end up sanding them again. If they don't escape. Okay, I'm going to trim this very close like so. Schmutz, 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 schmutz. Now let us cut. Let's see where I cut. Kind of in the middle. Does that bother me? No. No. It doesn't. Could I cut this and so okay, all right. <laughs> all right. All righty tidy too. I might as well try to do a better job. Right. I mean it didn't bother me terribly. But I could do a better job. Yeah, I know it. I can. And it didn't take a heck of a lot to do it either, so. Now, if I continued on this course, I would have like a big bead. I don't want a bead that big. So I'm gonna cut it in half. And that's even bigger than that one still. Going to do the old uh, close the ends trick. I am going to make it smaller. This bead is, these beads are really big. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing wrong with big, big beads, but uh, I don't see any reason to make something quite that large. Oh, this is what it looks like. Okay, let us close the... Actually, you know what I'm going to do while I have this nice cylinder? And it is a nice cylinder. I am going to take my very long needle that I seem to have lost. Hmm. Story of my life. Oh. I found it, I found it. And let's just straight through, turn it over, find the center, go down so that you meet the hole. 
like that that will actually help me later okay because these be even though it's not a hugely long bead it's not going to end up being like one of those three or four inch long beads nonetheless you know if you have a hole like that it's going to be easier when i am at the point of drilling a hole Okay, so I'm just pulling the clay from the sides up over the end. Okay, just like so. The goal is to have all the stripes meet at one point. I have never personally done it. But it's a goal. All right, so let us take this and go all the way through again. Ow. Owie. I just poked myself. All right. Repeat. Okay, let's do this again and let's try not to poke ourselves. There, that's good. Okay, so this is ready to go in the oven, pretty much. I will shape the other one, put them in the oven, and then I will be back. Okay, so here are my beads. They're cured and they're ready to be sanded and polished. Now, I was gonna start immediately with my micro mesh, but even though they're not textured in any way, the surface feels rather um, coarse, just a little bit irregular. So what I'm going to do instead of going to the micro mesh is I am gonna begin with my Aubranet P120. Now the thing about this particular piece is that I've used it quite a bit. And having used it quite a bit, it's not quite as coarse, I guess, as when it was new. But I think it will help just to knock, just to start to really smooth the surface. And it is more coarse than the Aubranet 50. Yeah, I can feel the difference. Okay. So I just dry sand like this. So don't put it in the water. But I will do this first. Yeah. And then I will move into my micro mesh sheets. Now micro mesh is actually made for sanding automotive paint. So you know that it's designed never to scratch. Yeah, it is. Abranet is quite a bit more coarse. Now P120, there, it, there are finer grades and finer grits, but P600, I think it is, uh, is it, it doesn't seem to do hardly anything. So that's why I'm using the 120. Also in another class, I started with 120 and it worked out really, really well. What you don't want to use is like 80, P80, Aubernet P80. Okay, 
So I guess you could say that the uh, micro mesh is meant for sort of finish, finish sanding, finish work, fine finish work. Yeah, I can tell the difference. It's pretty dramatic, actually. Now the micro mesh, I will sand in the water. So this is boring. <laughs> so I am going to cut, finish this. I'll do this one bead so I can show you the difference. And then I will be back. So here they are again. This one I sanded and I then did take it to my buffing machine because I got lazy. <laughs> um, and then this is one that has not been sanded. Nothing has been done to this at all. So you can see the difference between sanding and not sanding. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in and watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you learned something about making these little beads and perhaps they'll find their way into your work which would be absolutely great thank you so much for watching and uh if you learned anything if you enjoyed it i hope that you will like and subscribe so until we meet again i'm donna cato goodbye Okay, so I'm back. I know I said goodbye. I came back. This woman does this all the time. Well, I'm coming back for a good reason. <laughs> really, a good reason. No, when I showed you this, I believe I said I used Abronet P120. I lied. I used Abronet P600, which is a lot finer. Okay, so if you look in the black areas, you don't see any scratches. Now, as I'm looking at it, it's probably not the best sanding job I've ever done, but it's pretty. Okay, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to sand the other one. So I took the P120 and I did everything the same and look what happened. See all those little scratches? Those little white scratches there? Well, that's the P120. Now, the reason why I thought the P120 was fine was because of this particular piece. Let me just grab it. This is a class in the members' classroom. These were sanded with P120, and then I followed up through all the uh, micro mesh grits, and I did not sand these against my buffer. These I sanded against my cute pajamas. But you don't see any scratches. First of all, all these colors are very light. So if there are scratches, I can't see them because there's no con there would be no contrast between the scratches and the base color. Different story with black, isn't it? Look at that. Very clearly, you see those scratches. Now, does it bother me? Actually, I like the scratches on this bead. So it was kind of a happy accident because I like them. I think that they look, they make the bead look more interesting to me than if it's just flat, shiny black. And the scratches, I don't see any scratches in the stripes, which is the same thing where there's no contrast between a scratch and light colors, right? Okay, well, that's all I wanted to tell you. So if you're trying to make this and you follow my instructions and you get this, you wonder what happened. So I'm going to tell you the difference. Okay, so now it's time for me to say goodbye again. This is Donna Cato signing off.